So, in today's class we will look at uh, quadrilateral elements and we will first uh, look at derivation of shape functions for both rectangular elements and square elements with the different number of nodes. And then we look at uh, similar to 1 D elements, we look at isoparametric mapping concepts for quadrilateral element and also its limitation and also we will discuss about numerical integration in two dimensional for two dimensional elements and also derivation of element equations for two dimensional boundary value problem using quadrilateral element with uh, different number of nodes. So, now higher order elements and elements with curved boundaries are effective when good approximate solutions are required with relatively few elements. So, that is the uh, basic idea behind this quadrilateral elements. Theoretically shape functions for any of these elements can be developed by starting from a polynomial of appropriate degree and then expressing the coefficients in the polynomial in terms of nodal parameters or the nodal values uh, similar to uh, the way we did uh, for one dimensional el elements both two node elements and three node elements and also similar kind of approach we also adopted for deriving shape functions for uh, three node uh, triangular elements which are linear. This, this was the procedure used in the development of linear triangular element. This uh, approach however, becomes tedious and impractical for higher order elements that is starting uh, from a polynomial of uh, appropriate degree and then trying to find the coefficients of this polynomial by substituting the nodal values or nodal parameters and corresponding nodal coordinates and solving these coefficients and substituting back these coefficients into the polynomial and grouping terms containing uh, nodal parameters, common nodal parameters. So, uh, that is how we derived for uh, that is how we derived shape functions for uh, 1 D elements and also linear triangular element, but that approach becomes tedious or impractical for higher order elements that is as the number of nodes for a particular element increases we need to choose uh, uh, a polynomial having as many number of coefficients as the number of nodes for that particular elements. So, solving these coefficients and substituting back and grouping terms having the nodal parameters common nodal parameters becomes tedious for higher order elements. Fortunately for second order problems simple formulas exist that give shape functions directly for rectangular and triangular elements. Uh, so, we will be discussing some of these uh, uh, approaches how to get these simple formulas in this uh, uh, class. So, uh, uh, this lecture presents uh, shape function formulas for higher order rectangular and triangular elements <laughs> and these formulas together with isoparametric mapping concept play a fundamental role in development of shape uh, development of elements for practical applications because uh, these higher order elements or element with curved boundaries are really required for solving some of the practical problems. The concept of uh, isoparametric mapping was introduced earlier for one dimensional problem as a way to map actual element to simpler uh, parent, uh, parent element. Basically, this is uh, uh, this was done for uh, uh, one dimensional elements uh, to uh, integrate uh, some of the uh, matrices and vectors that we get.
shape functions uh, this is how we did shape functions were written for <coughs> the parent element integrations and differentiations were performed over parent element so in the so in this lecture the concept of isoparametric mapping will be extended to two dimensional problems using this concept it is possible to develop quadrilateral elements and element with curved boundaries so now uh, let's start with uh, uh, derivation of shape functions for rectangular elements for rectangular elements the shape functions are based either on lagrange interpolation formula or they are written directly from experience and the elements which can be uh, the shape functions of which can be obtained using lagrange interpolation formula are classified as lagrangian elements and the other elements they are classified as serendipity elements so now shape functions based on lagrange interpolation formula the shape functions for rectangular and square elements are products of lagrange interpolation shape functions in x and y directions as illustrated in the following examples so basically uh, we need to write lagrange interpolation formula or uh, lagrange interpolation shape function in x direction and lagrange interpolation shape function in the y direction multiply these two uh, then we get uh, the shape function for the particular rectangular or square element this is how uh, the procedure goes uh, based on lagrange interpolation formula so now let's take a four node rectangular element a four node rectangular element is shown in the figure the coordinates of uh, node 1 are denoted by x1 y1 and of node 2 are denoted by x2 y2 similarly node 3 node 4 etc and also note that for this particular element that is shown in the figure x coordinate of uh, node 2 is same as x coordinate of node 3 similarly y coordinate of uh, node 4 is same as y coordinate of node 3 similarly x coordinate of node 4 is same as x coordinate of node 1 and y coordinate of node 2 is same as y coordinate of node 1 so uh, nodes uh, can be denoted using the coordinates or for simplicity nodal coordinates are identified by the node numbers so now let's see how to derive shape functions for this particular element if t is the field variable and t1 t2 t3 t4 etc are the nodal variables then the trial solution in terms of shape functions is expressed as first let's see only along line 1 2 along 1 2 you can see from the figure y is going to be constant y is equal to y 1 therefore shear functions must be function of x only so now we are going to write shear functions along line 1 2 so that is denoted with t1 that is a field variable variation along line 1 2 is denoted with t1 and it's going to be function of x alone n1 n2 are going to be lagrange interpolation functions t1 t2 are the field variable values at node 1 and node 2 and from the knowledge of one dimensional elements we already know how to get 
n 1 and n 2 using one dimensional Lagrange interpolation formula, we know n 1 is equal to this n 2 is equal to the value or the quantity that is given there. So, uh, we know how the field variable is varying along 1 2. Now, let us look at along side 4 3 and from the figure it can be easily noticed that y value along 4 3 line is equal to y 3 is equal to y 4 and field variable along 4 3 is denoted with T Roman letter 2 and that can be written in terms of uh, shape functions of node 4 and node 3 in the manner that is shown there. That is T 2 is equal to n 4 times T 4 plus n 3 times T 3, uh, which can be written in matrix and vector form in the manner that is shown. Again from one dimensional Lagrange interpolation formula uh, T n n 4 and n 3 can be written like this. So, we have seen how the field variable T is varying along side 1 2 and also along side 4 3. Now, let us look at take one of the sides which is along y direction. <coughs> in y direction, so uh, along 1 2, we know T 1 and along 4 3, we know T 2 from the previous equations. So, you once we know the value of field variable along side 1 2 and 4 3, in the y direction variation of t in the y direction that is along side 1 4 or 2 3 can be written as t is equal to n 1 t 1 plus n 4 t 2 which can be written in matrix and vector form in the way that is shown there. And now substituting t 1 t 2. and n 1 and 4 can be obtained by writing one dimensional Lagrange interpolation in y direction. So, that is how n 1 and n 4 are obtained. Expressions for side 1 2 and 4 3 can be written in matrix form that is t 1 t 2 are written together in a matrix and vector form. So, substituting T 1 T 2 vector into the previous equation, we get this one. So, carrying out multiplications of n 1 n 4 vector with the matrix containing n 1 n 2 0 0 0 0 n 3 n 4. we get this, which can be compactly written like this. So, capital N 1 is defined as small n 1 as a function of x times small n 1 as a function of y. Similarly, capital N 2 which is shape function corresponding to node 2 is equal to small n 1 as a function of y times small n 2 as a function of x. Similarly, shape function of node 3, which is denoted with capital N 3, it is equal to small n 4 as a function of y times small n 3 as a function of x. Similarly, shape function at node 4, which is denoted with capital 
n 4 is equal to small n 4 as a function of x times small n 4 as a function of y. So, we can write what is capital N 1, capital N 2, capital N 3. and substituting what is small n 1 as a function of x, small n 1 as a function of y, we get n 1 like this, which is basically derived based on Lagrange interpolation formula in x direction multiplied by Lagrange interpolation formula in y direction at node 1. Similarly, shear function of node 2. shape function of node 3 and shape function of node 4. It can be easily observed that all of these shape functions, let us say n 1, n 1 is going to be equal to 1 and x is equal to x and x is equal to x 1 and y is equal to y 1 and it is going to be equal to 0 at all other locations. Similarly, n 2 is going to be 1 at x is equal to x 2, y is equal to y 2 and it is going to be 0 at other nodal position. Similarly, n 3 and n 4 are going to be n 3 is going to be equal to 1 at node 3 and it is going to be equal to 0 at rest of the node. Similarly, n 4 is going to be 1 at node 4 and it is going to be equal to 0 at rest of the nodes. <coughs> so, the shape functions for rectangular elements are product of Lagrange interpolations in two coordinate directions. Uh, so, that is how we derived and this is n 1 and note that this is equal to 1 at node 1 and 0 at other nodes and it is linear function of x along 1 2 side 1 2 and linear function of y along side 1 4 and 0 along side 2 3 and 3 4 because the node 1 is not part of side 2 3 and 3 4. So, it is going to be a shape function of node 1 is going to be 0 along side 2 3 and 3 4. So, these properties not only shape node uh, shape function of node 1, but other shape functions of other nodes also satisfy these properties. So, uh, shape function of a node is going to be 0 along sides to which it is not going to be a part and shape function of a particular node is going to be equal to 1 at its own location and it is going to be equal to 0 at all other locations <coughs> at all other nodal locations. So, other shear functions have similar behavior because of these characteristics the ith shear function is considered associated with node i of the element. And the shear functions that we derived based on Lagrange interpolation formula, the same shear functions can also be derived from the from starting with a polynomial and that polynomial is given here. So, starting with this polynomial we can derive same shear functions similar to the procedure that we adopted for triangular element. And if you see this polynomial, note that because of presence of uh, term x y, the x and y derivatives of t are not constant. And if you recall, shape function or uh, the shape functions, derivatives of shape functions of a linear triangular element are constant and also uh, <coughs> derivatives of t, if 
field variable t are also constant for linear triangular element because uh, if you recall the polynomial that we used for deriving shape functions for linear triangular element do not contain this x y term, but now for this four node quadrilateral element one way is one way of deriving shape function is starting with the Lagrange interpolation formula or the other way is, is by starting from a polynomial like this and if you start with polynomial like this you can see uh, there is a presence of this x y term. Basically uh, please note that this uh, uh, 1 x y x y all these terms are coming from Pascal's triangle. So, because of the presence of this x y term uh, in this uh, expression uh, the derivatives of t with respect x and y are not constant, uh, which, which was the case for triangular element, linear triangular element. So, uh, therefore, this element generally gives better results than a triangular element. So, uh, we have seen how to derive shear functions for a four node a rectangular element using Lagrange interpolation formula. So, uh, we can uh, solve an example like this for shear functions a four node rectangular element is shown all the uh, coordinates of all the nodes are also shown x y coordinate system or x y axis uh, are also indicated clearly in the figure and these are the shape function expressions that we derived. So, now if, if somebody is interested in writing shape functions for each of these nodes n 1 to n 4 uh, simply we need to plug in the corresponding uh, coordinates, coordinate values into these expressions for n 1, n 2, n 3 and n 4. So, x 1 is, is equal to 0, y 1 is equal to 0, x 2 is equal to 3, y 2 is equal to 0, x 3 is equal to 3, y 3 is equal to 2, uh, x 4 is equal to 0, y 4 is equal to 2 substituting these quantities into n 1, n 2, n 3, n 4 expressions, we can get the shear functions. Substituting the numerical values of nodal coordinates into the above shear function formulas, the explicit expressions for shear function for this rectangular element are as follows. So, this is n 1 after simplification n 2, n 3 and n 4. To visualize how uh, the shear function varies as a function of x and y over the, uh, 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 the domain of that particular element, we can actually plot n 1, n 2, n 3, n 4 as a function of x and y with x varying from 0 to 3 and y varying from 0 to 2. So, similar kind of plots are shown here for n 1 and n 2, three dimensional plots of n 1 and n 2 are shown and these plots can be obtained using any of the commercial software like MATLAB or Mathematica by uh, just uh, giving the expression for shape function and also the range over which plot is required that is x going from 0 to 3, y going from 0 to 2. So, this is how we can derive shape functions for four node rectangular element using Lagrange interpolation formula. So, now let us take a six node rectangular element like this and here also shape functions can be written in the manner or following the procedure that we adopted for four node rectangular element uh, writing shape function expressions along x direction and shape function expressions along y direction multiplying both we get shape functions of each of the nodes. So, uh, the coordinates of node 1 
are x 1 y 1 and those of node 2 are x 2 y 2 similarly other nodes. And you can see here in this uh, 6 node rectangular element which is shown uh, node uh, 2 and node 5 are uh, interior to side 1 2 and side 6 4 and this nodes 2 and 5 are located arbitrarily on this side 1 3 and 6 4. So, now let us write the shape functions for all the nodes of this 6 node rectangular element following same reason so following same reasoning as for 4 node element it is obvious that shape functions have quadratic variation uh, in x direction and linear variation in y direction. If you see this uh, the 6 node rectangular element along side 1 3 we have 3 nodes along side 1 6 we have only 2 nodes. So, 2 nodes in y direction gives us linear variation in y direction 3 nodes in x direction gives quadratic variation in x direction. So, following the procedure that we adopted for rectangular a 4 node rectangular element uh, we can derive in a similar manner shape functions for all 6 nodes of this particular element. Here n 1 is shown, n 1 uh, the shape function of node 1 is Lagrange interpolation formula in x direction, which is going to be quadratic, because there are 3 nodes in x direction times Lagrange interpolation in y direction, which is going to be linear, because there are 2 nodes in y direction. The product of those 2 gives us shape function for node 1. Similarly, node 2, node 3, node 4, node 5 and node 6. And once we have all the shape functions, the trial solution can be written like this t is equal to n 1 times t 1 plus n 2 times t 2 plus n 3 times t 3 plus n 4 times t 4 plus n 5 times t 5 plus n 6 times t 6, which can be written in a matrix and vector form the way that is shown. So, now let us uh, take an example numerical example with all the coordinate values given. So, here in the figure a 6 node rectangular element is shown or uh, x y coordinates of all nodes are also can be uh, easily obtained x y coordinate of all the nodes can also be easily obtained uh, using the information that is given in figure uh, that is x 1 is equal to 0 y 1 is equal to 0 x 2 is equal to 2 y 2 is equal to 0 x 3 is equal to 3, y 3 is equal to 0 and x 4 is going to be 3 and y 4 is going to be 2, x 5 is going to be 2, y 5 is going to be 2, x 6 is going to be 0, y 6 is going to be 2. So, with all this information we can what we can do is we can plug in these uh, coordinates of these uh, nodes into the uh, expressions that we have for shear functions n 1 to n 6 and we can get the, uh, the shear function values of all the nodes and also we can write the trial solution. Substituting the numerical values of nodal coordinates into the shear function formulas explicit expressions for shear functions for 6 node rectangular element are given here n 1, n 2, n 3, n 4 and n 5. 
and to visualize how uh, the shear functions looks or how they vary how they vary along x and y directions we can plot three dimensional plots of n 1 and 2 are shown in figure below and similarly shear function shear functions of other nodes can be plotted so this is a six node rectangular element based on lagrange interpolation formula so now let's look at another lagrangian element which is nine node rectangular element a nine node rectangular element is shown here also xy axis are shown in the figure and nodes 2, 4, 6, 8 can be located at any place on respective sides and node 9 is located inside the element and coordinates of node 1 is uh, coordinates of node 1 are x 1 y 1 and similarly for the other nodes. And here you can see shear functions uh, varies quadratically in x direction both in x direction and y direction because we have three nodes along x direction and three nodes along y direction. Here shear functions vary quadratically in both directions. So, writing Lagrange interpolation formula in x direction multiplied with Lagrange interpolation formula in y direction, we can write shear function expressions for all the nine nodes n 1, n 2, n 3, n 4, n 5, n 6, similarly n 2 and the rest. And the properties that we have seen for four node quadrilateral element, the shear functions for this nine node rectangular element also satisfies. So, that is uh, if you see this uh, node 1, this is the expression for shear function of node 1 <coughs> and it can be easily verified that n 1 is going to be equal to 0 at all other nodes except node 1, where is the where it is equal to 1. <coughs> and also it can be verified that n 1 is going to be 0 along sides 3, 4, 5 <coughs> and along sides 7, 6, 5. And along side 1, 2, 3, <coughs> this expression is quadratic function in x and along side 1, 8, 7 it is quadratic function of y. It is 0 at all other nodes except node 1, where it is equal to 1, 0 along edges 3, 4, 5 and 7, 6, 5 and along edge 1 or side 1, 2, 3, it is going to be it is going to be quadratic function of x and along side or edge 1, edge 7 it is a quadratic function of y. <coughs> and not only the shape for shape function of node 1, similar observations can be made for other shape functions. So, here uh, when we are uh, deriving shape function expressions for this 9 node Lagrangian element, basically we use Lagrangian interpolation formula 
instead of that we can also start with a polynomial having 9 coefficients and we can derive same shape functions. Same shape functions can also be derived from the following polynomial using procedure employed for linear triangular elements. So, this is uh, the element for which we need to derive shape functions. There are 9 nodes, so we need to start with a polynomial having 9 coefficient, 9 coefficients like this and we can adopt the procedure that we adopted for deriving shape functions for linear triangular element and once we do that, we get same shape functions as we obtained using Lagrange interpolation formula, but only thing is this procedure is going to be tedious and also it is going to be cumbersome, since we need to solve for 9 coefficients and we need to group terms containing uh, same nodal parameters or nodal values to get the shape function expressions. So, now we have the uh, shape function expressions, explicit expressions based on Lagrange interpolation formula for this 9 node element, we can write shape function for any element once we know the nodal coordinates. So, now let us take an example, here a 9 node element is shown, x y axis are also shown and also from the information that is given, uh, we can easily figure out what are the x y coordinates of each of the nodes. So, once we have that information, we can plug this information into the explicit expressions for shape functions that we obtained using Lagrange interpolation formula to get the shape function expressions. Substituting the numerical values of nodal coordinates into the above shape function formulas, explicit expressions for n 1, n 2, n 9 shape function for this rectangular element. Here even though n 1, n 2, n 9 are shown, uh, we can easily write or we can easily uh, simplify the substituting the nodal coordinates in the previous explicit formulas and we can get the node, uh, shape function expressions for other nodes as well. And to visualize how these shape function n 1 and n 2 varies, we can even plot. So, here three dimensional plot of uh, n 1 and n 2 are shown. <coughs> for this particular 9 node element. So, we have seen a 4 node rectangular element, 6 node rectangular element and 9 node rectangular element and we, we have also seen how to derive shape functions of all these elements using Lagrange interpolation formula. So, uh, these are the elements for which we can adopt Lagrange interpolation formula to derive the shape functions, but uh, there are uh, some other elements for which uh, we need to adopt some other procedure. So, those uh, set of elements are called serendipity elements. So, now let us look at those elements, serendipity shape functions for rectangular elements. Following shape functions for rectangular elements have been developed intuitively, hence the name serendipity based on basic characteristics of shape functions that is n 1 is equal to 1 at node 1 and 0 at other nodes or n i is equal to 1, n i is equal to 1 at node i and 0 at other nodes. So, uh, instead of using Lagrange interpol or sometimes it is not possible to use Lagrange interpolation formula to derive shape functions for certain rectangular elements containing certain number of nodes. In that case, we need to derive shape functions uh, intuitively uh, without violating the condition that shape function of node i is going to is equal to 1 at node i and equal to 0 at other nodes using that. Uh, basic characteristic of step functions and intuitively if we can derive the shape functions and that is what 
serendipity element. <coughs> Elements based on these shear functions are very popular. Their main advantage is that all the nodes are placed on element sides and thus there are no interior nodes. So, now let us look at 8 node serendipity element and it is a quadratic element. So, it is called 8 node quadratic serendipity element and x y axis are indicated in the figure, but also uh, based on the information that is given in the figure, we can easily figure out what are the x y coordinates of each of the nodes. And if you compare this element with the 9 node element that we have just seen, uh, we can see we can you can notice that only the middle interior node, uh, which is ninth node is missing. So, that is the only difference. So, uh, here uh, before I show the expressions for this uh, element, uh, shear function expressions for this element. Uh, Let us uh, see uh, if you want to derive shear function of node 1 and you can see uh, from the figure node 1 is going to be 0 along edge 3 6 and node 1 should also be 0 along edge 7 6 5 in addition to edge 3 4 5. And if you if you can include the equation of line 3 4 5 equation of line of edge 3 4 5 and equation of line of edge 7 6 5 into the shear function expression of node 1. So, then node 1 is going to be 0 along edge 3 4 5 and it is going to be 0 along edge 7 6 5. Similarly, node 1 has to be 0 along or at node 2 and 8. So, if we can come up or if we can get the equation of line which passes through node 2 and 8, uh, that can be easily derived based on the nodal coordinates of a node 2 and node 8, we can easily write what is the equation of straight line that passes through nodes 2 and 8. If we can include that equation of that line also into the shear function of node 1, then we get the shear function including all the, uh, uh, the equations of sides 3, 4, 5 and 7, 6, 5 and also equation of line passing through node 2 and 8. If we include all this into the shear function expression for node 1 and normalize it, we are going to get finally, the shear function expression explicit expression for this 8 node quadratic serendipity element for node 1. Similarly, we can derive for node 2, node 3, node 4, node 5, node 6, node 7 and node 8. So, based on that we can easily write the shear functions for this element. Nodes, uh, note that nodes are at the corners, nodes are at the corners and at the mid sides and the origin of the coordinate system is at the element centroid for this element. So, based on the procedure that I mentioned, when we are writing shear function for node 1, include equation of line passing through sides 3, 4, 5 and also include equation of line passing through 7, 6, 5 and equation of line passing through 2 and 8 and normalize it, then we are going to get shear function expression of node 1. Here it is written in terms of S and T, where S and T are defined, S is equal to 2 x over A, T is equal to 2 or 2 y over B. So, this is how we can write shear function for rest of the nodes. 
So, adopting the explanation or the procedure that I mentioned, one can easily write shape functions for rest of the nodes, explicit expressions for all the nodes, all the eight nodes are given. Here, And it can be easily verified that each of these nodes is equal to 1 at its own position and it is equal to 0 at the other nodal locations. It can be easily verified that the shape functions have the desired properties that is n 1 sorry n i is equal to 1 at node i and n i is equal to 0 at other nodes. So, here uh, we used uh, some kind of uh, reasoning or uh, uh, we have developed whatever expressions that I have shown, we have developed for this element intuitively by making sure that it is uh, a, a shear function at a particular node is equal to 0 at other nodal location, we have derived the element, uh, we have derived the nodal uh, shape functions, explicit expressions of nodal shape functions intuitively. Instead of that, we can also start with a polynomial taking uh, a polynomial having 8 number of coefficients. These shear functions can be derived from the polynomial, uh, for, from the following polynomial, from the following polynomial using method that we adopted for linear triangular elements. So, since there are eight nodes, we need to start with a polynomial having eight coefficients. <coughs> so, this is uh, the polynomial with which you can start and adopt the procedure that we did for linear triangular elements and finally, we can get same shape functions as we have seen and the three dimensional surface plots of these shape functions are similar to those of biquadratic Lagrangian shape functions. So, now uh, we have derived shape functions for uh, 4 node element, 6 node element, 9 node element and 8 node element. So, we can write shape functions for all elements with nodes having nodes from 4 to 9. So, here um, we will write a general set of shape functions to define uh, shape functions for any rectangular elements with nodes ranging from 4 to 9. The complete set of function shape functions will be given in the uh, in a table and but the ordering of uh, nodes or the ordering of element node numbers is very very important. So, the expressions that we I am going to show you are valid only for this uh, node numbering. With this particular node numbering scheme, shape functions for higher order elements are constructed by adding terms into shape function for lower order elements. Here there is a typing mistake in the title, it should be shape functions for 4 to 9 node rectangular element. So, complete set of shape functions for any element with nodes from 4 to 9 are given in table below and the following notation is used for the expressions that are given in the table. S is defined like the way it is done earlier, S is equal to 2 x over A, T is equal to 2 y over B and F 1, F 2, F 3, F 4 f y f 6, f 7, f 8 and f 9 are defined like this. Uh, the shear functions 
expressions for all nodes of an element having 4 to 9 nodes is expressed in terms of these <coughs> f's. So, this definition of f 1 to f 9 is very important to read the table. So, table the table expressions for shape functions of all nodes for 4 to 9 node rectangular elements are given. 4 node element, 5 node element, 6 node, 7 node, 8 node and 9 node element. And please note that elements with number of nodes between 4 and 8 are known as transition elements. These elements are useful when transition when a transition from quadratic to linear element is desired. So, using this table we can derive shape functions for any noded element starting from 4 node to 9 node element and we will continue in the next class.